Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we are going to talk about the law of accommodation. Now, this is a biological law that not only involves training, but involves almost everything on Earth. And the reason we're going to talk about today is we've got three new interns this particular semester, and we just had them do a ton of homework on this. So let's get to it. Okay, law of accommodation by definition is if we do the same thing over and over again, it's going to create a less result. What does that mean? That means if your program looks very similar constantly in a monthly, weekly, monthly, or yearly process, your body is going to adjust to that training and eventually stall out or get worse or cause injury at the, at the very worst. The point is, is that law of accommodation really is making you have to vary your training. Now, how can we vary this training? Well, we can vary it in a ton of different ways. My favorite way is to adjust the mode. The mode is the exercise, right? We can squat, we can deadlift, we can bench press, right? We can do all these different things. We could change which order the exercises are in. We could put the heavy stuff first like we used to do in the old days at Westside Barbell. We could do winning warmups first like we do now here at the gym. We could do some stretching like we're doing in the off-season manual right now. The point is, is those are different stimuluses based on the fact that they're at different times of the workout. The next thing we can adjust is the intensity. Now intensity could be measured in RPE, which is my favorite way to do things, which allows daily stress adjustment. We could do things in percentages based off of one rep maxes, which is a good way to peak for meets, but not necessarily a great way to train all year round. Or we could adjust it based on time meaning how much can we get done in say 20, 30, 40, 50 plus minutes. The point is, is we have all these different ways to adjust, but the important thing is, is that you need to change what you do in order for the body to have a different level of adaptation to a workout. I look at it in this perspective like reading a book, okay? If you read the same book 50 times, which would be doing a workout the same 50 times in a row or in the same week, what you're gonna find is that the body after the first three or four times that you go through it, it's going to get better, then you're going to notice it's going to plateau, and then it's actually going to regress. That's the really tricky part about training, is that the body has to be constantly adjusted to new stimuluses in order to see new results. This means that whatever gets you from a 200-pound bench to a 300-pound bench may not get you from a 300-pound bench to a 400-pound bench. Now, at the end of the day, not all of us are genetic freaks, and it's going to take many, many years for us to get better at what we do. This means that a lot of people, they look towards what type of training those particular people do, and then they look at it and they try to copy it. The problem is, is you may not have those same biomechanics, same leverages, or most importantly, the same stress levels. This is going to allot you a different result from the same exact workout. So many times workouts have been copied by the best in the world and then utilized by people that are subpar or amateur. And then what ends up happening is they don't see any results or maybe even start pushing themselves towards injury. I don't know how many times we get people that are accelerated that write, say, baseline cookie cutter programs online. And then what ends up happening is they think that they can be used in general population. We have, I would say, 30, 40% of our online clients that we deal with have come from these programs with previous injuries, and then we have to fix them and show them that customization of workouts is the most important thing. This means that workouts need to be designed around your individual weaknesses and your individual stress levels. And I think that the stress levels is actually almost more important sometimes than the weaknesses. What does this mean? This means that law of accommodation also starts to kind of pile into stress level. That means that if you have a stressful job or you're working a 10 hour shift or you work third shift and you don't get great sleep, you're going to have to adjust your workout based on those particular models. So at the end of the day, I, like I told my interns and give you a little bit of inside information, I always write the definition of law of accommodation at the top of any workout that I write for anyone. And what this does is it puts me in a particular position to write a better workout than I would if I was just writing off the hip. This means that if I'm always thinking of variability and adjustability with a smart thought process of energy systems and time under tension, then what I'm going to be able to do is take a workout and adapt it to anyone's needs and anyone's stress level. So what does this mean? This means that if you're getting an online coach and they're not asking you about what you do for a job, what your previous injuries are, 
how well you adjust to training and taking a look at what you used to previously do and maybe what's given you results before, they're probably not having enough information in order to take you to that next level of whatever that may be. The point is, is that we are in different ponds at different times. We're not 22 forever, we're not 35 forever. Even chronological age can have an effect on law of accommodation and how fast you adjust to training. Usually the more advanced you are as far as training years or age, let's say you're 20 but you've been training for eight years, you're eight years old in training, your workouts are gonna have to get more and more adaptable the older you get. And a lot of reason is you gotta reduce mileage. So we talk a lot about reducing mileage and I think that's one reason law of accommodation is so important. You have to reduce the mileage in which your training is adjusting itself. Meaning that if you follow a bench press program that's very specific or a deadlift program that's very specific, what you're gonna find is maybe you do get 20, 30 pounds stronger. But it doesn't matter if your shoulders or your hips or your back are injured, or at the very least, you've created high mileage and injuries down the road. So I hope that this helps and gets you guys to understand why law of accommodation is so important and why I put it at the top of every workout that we write here at Winning Strength Depot. So if you guys have any questions, go on Patreon and we can try to figure that out. And like I said, this took us 30 years to figure this out and that's why we're so successful with online coaching. So go check out winningstrength.com and we'll see you guys on Patreon.